wondering about with anyone It's not unusual to see me cry Hey, it's me, Kato Kale, and you're watching the Barry Z. Oops! Hey, it's me, Kato Kale, and you're watching the Barry Z Show, and I'm a huge fan of Barry Z. Seriously, I... Hi, I'm Adrian Z, and you're watching Barry Z. Hey, I'm Mary Hart, and you are watching Barry Z. Hi, I'm Robin Leach, and I'm Richard Hahn, and you're watching the Larry Gray Show. No, the Barry Z Show. Thank you very much. Hi, it's Barry Z from the Barry Z Show at Napty, talking to John Cryer from Two and a Half Men, and we're two men, and where's the half? I, 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 oh, we left him at the door. Great. We'll be right back to find him after these messages. Don't go anywhere. You have a boyfriend? Would I be here if I had a boyfriend? I've got one. You want to come over? I'm Mark. I'm Gabriel. Do you live around here? Why are you here? Hi, I'm Catherine Lambert. I'm an actress. This is a bad idea. Two are roommates? No. But we're very close. I even take care of his dog. Trixie! You've got your place to yourself now, right? I need to be alone. Booth Mark. You trap. I live with this guy, Rich. He's straight. I need the apartment. I need the apartment. You can't ask a one-night stand to come back tomorrow night! Flip? Yeah, flip. Where do you live? This summer. I'm Miss Coco Peru. Hello. A whip and poo. What the hell is a whip and poo? Fine Line Features presents Christian Campbell, J.P. Pitock, and Tori Spelling. You want some? Yeah. In a comedy that shows. I find the idea of two men getting on incredibly hot. How the other half loves. I don't want to sleep with women. I'm sorry, Gwen. No matter which half, you are. There is a drag queen in the bathroom? A little piece shy of delivery. Miss Coco's here to help. Gabe, I talked to my mother. She called you my boyfriend again. We went to one prom back when I thought I was. Body like girls, then. Whoops. Trick. A story about two guys trying to make it in the big city. It's big. It's beautiful. And you're gonna love it. Come on up. Debbie Trochet. Come on. Debbie Trochet. Sure. Are we on? Anybody else coming up? No, no, no. Testing one, two. There we go. Sit. Who else is coming up? Bob Bob Hawk, producer. All right. Bob, you coming up? Brian Cates, editor. Oh, my God. Who else is coming up? Come on up. Brian. Go on number two. That's my brother. Come on up. Brian. Your brother's coming up, too? Are we all ready? Oh, come on, let's come up. Steve, come on. Have a seat. Okay. Are we all ready to go? Okay. Welcome to Midnight Classic Cinema at the Cinema Village. My name is Barry Z from the Barry Z Show. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming by. We want to thank you and everyone else for being here, right? Right. Steve? Right. Thank you. <laughs> My special co-host, Pluto. No. What's wrong right. now? You guys okay? No, I got new legs. Oh, yeah. They're very There's flexible. There's nothing there. Yeah, sit down. Is it? Yeah, I'll sit down. Okay. Yeah. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. Well, he was on his knees. Anyway, who was on their knees? It's very comfortable. Though. A anyway, seven? you on your knees, Steve? Huh? Oh. Not anymore. <laughs> Anyway, my special co-host for the evening, our uh, gay icon, Christian Campbell, oh who we know, honorary homosexual, yeah, <laughs> who we know from, uh, let's see, what, Reef of uh -huh. and Trick, yes. and so many other movies yeah. and shows, uh, yeah. plus you're the brother of Nev Campbell, right? I am and always will be. Wow, let's hear it for this incredible actor. Uh, Christian Campbell. Uh, also related to Campbell Soups, right? Uh, no, 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 no. You're not 57 variety? I'd have a lot more money if I did. Okay, anyway. 
Uh, now we also have the writer and director of Trip. Just the director. You don't want to be the writer too? Well, I'm not. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just the director, Jim Paul. Yeah! The <laughs> and uh, you're also a uh, director and writer of the uh, Lizzie so McGuire movie, no? The Lizzie McGuire movie. Yeah, wow. Let's hear it for that. Lizzie <laughs> McGuire. Wow. And we have this gentleman, Bob Hawk. I was. One of the, I still am one of the producers. <laughs> I guess as long as it exists. <laughs> my name. Yes, right. exists forever. My name's on there. Very long night. Uh, and also, uh, Jim and I optioned it. Uh, we got together $150 each. We wanted the screenwriter to know that we were serious. And we gave him three hundred dollars. Now I don't know what that is. Seven fifty. Adjusted for in, in, in inflation, but anyway, yeah. What did you say? It's seven hundred and fifty in today's dollars. Wow. <laughs> so the guy is worth a fortune, huh? My God. And who else do we have? We have, yeah. of course, actor comedian Steve Hayes. <laughs> wow. Who we know from Trick. And what else? And Trick. And Tired Old Queens? I love it. Yes, Tired Old Queen at the movies. Yes. yes. Oh, Tell me about that. Quincy, right. give him the mic. What? Hi. Oh, hi. Yeah, I have a YouTube show called Tired Old Queen at the movies, and I try to get people to watch classic films. Life? Uh, like Casablanca, then Trick. Yes, yeah, Trick is one of them. Trick for a classic fun. now. I love yeah, we acted in the great. Yeah. We hung around long enough. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and the, you know, this was the first, well, this is the movie I did before Gone with the Wind, and I was very happy. <laughs> it did a lot better than Gone with the Wind, actually. And what other movies were you in? Uh, Gone with the Wind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could have happened. That Chrissy took and you were one of the stars of Comedy You Grand, my comedy That's club. That's right, I was, I was. I wow. Was, yeah, yeah, you were the grand in Comedy You Grand. I'll give you an hour to cut that out. That's <laughs> true, that's true. And we also have our lovely Deb Trochet, who is in the movie. Uh, Charles, yes, yes, I am yes, in the movie. I'm actually in the videotape. Wow. And who else do we have here? Um, oh, and I'm Robin Kerrigan. I choreographed Tori Spelling's tap dance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Worked on um, on helping JP do his go go, go dancing. Dance. But you're every time we don't see Tori's feet, it's your it's feet. It's my. These are the feet. Every that time we hear. don't see Tori's feet, we hear Robin's feet. <laughs> I overdub the taps. I'm just saying. Yeah. And Debbie Troche doesn't have any lines in the movie because we couldn't pay her. So then we added oh. grunts and funny noises later. And you're brilliant because you, it's a total silent movie role, and you're genius. And you're genius. <laughs> genius. And. Uh, <laughs> All of them were looped afterwards, by the way, and you're hilariously brilliant. And let's introduce this gentleman right here. I'm not sure who he is. <laughs> I'm Brian Case, I'm the editor. Yes! Brian <laughs> <laughs> and I spent weeks toiling together. Months. It was months. Early years. Months. Remember we used to walk down to the 6th Avenue uh, flea market when we had to clear our brain? Oh, I got the best leather jacket. I know. Which was stolen on the Fire Island Fair. Oh, yeah, but it fits yeah. me beautifully now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I am the Fire Island Fairy. Never mind. Fire Island what? Fairy. Oh. Did it just leave? No, no, no. I'm right here. You're looking right at me. I see. There we go. Okay. So, Jim Fall. Oh, God. Right? Yeah. Director? Yeah. Not writer? No. Well, I mean, I write, but yeah. Officially not. How did this movie come about? And to find the title, Trick. Well, originally it was called Gay Boy. Jason Schaefer, I was directing, I, Robin and I wrote a show called Blood Orgy of the Carnival Queens, a classic of the theater. And there was an actor named Eric Bernard in the show. And oh, I had, I remember him. Eric Bernard. And I had written one screenplay called 88s, which you covered when we did a reading of it in the Lane Theater, and I still have it on VHS. It was about 88s? Yes, yeah. it was about 88s. Middle Lane. Middle Lane. Nathan Lane Lane Theater. Nathan Lane and Cindy Loper. Yes, but Nathan Lane wasn't in it, Stanley Tucci. Anyway, it's a long story. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Different thing. Um, anyway, <laughs> an, actor, an actor named Eric Bernal we cast in our show, and I asked them, Does that, has anyone read a screenplay? that they like, because I can't write another one. And Eric said, uh, a friend of mine wrote this movie called Gay Boy. I'm like, Gay Boy, that sounds really funny. And then, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I guess I met Jason, or I read the script first, then I met Jason. And he, Jason was sort of, 
hell bent on making the movie himself for like no money, really cheap and really fast. And I said, no, 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 no. Let me just let me try to make this movie. And then I showed it. To, then I think I sent it to tried to send it to Sundance. Is that what it was? And John Cooper sent it to you. Mm-hmm. I think, or was that 88? John Cooper introduced us. You're right, right, right. And then he Bob and I, uh, along with my lawyer, Mark Beagleman, uh, we optioned it, and, and then it took four years to get made, uh, where it evolved and changed, and Miss Coco got involved, and it all sort of evolved into what it turned into. <laughs> what it turned into? Uh, well, the movie you're going to see tonight. That's correct. <clears throat> wow. And, oh, and can I say something? It took four years. We thought we had all the money, and we didn't have all the money, and then they, they dropped out. I won't name those people. Horrible. But it took two name more years. Uh, but the right person came along with the right money, and Jim and I were on set one day, and, and we said, that's why we had to wait. Well... Because the right people were in front yeah. of the camera and yeah. behind the camera. Yeah, I mean, what what I always sort of say is, what, at Sundance when we first screened the movie, mm-hmm. I got up and I thanked everyone who said no because yeah. we were ready to sell our soul to the devil, and the script wasn't ready. And thank God it took four years to happen because we kept working on the script, and finally, when it was ready to get made, it got made, and that's not a coincidence. So you know. Yeah. yeah. And how many readings did we have? Seven hundred. Seven hundred readings. <laughs> and was the cast group? Was your cast? No, this one. The first pick? This one, no, no. no. This one, this one is a miracle because yeah. he. First of all, you gave a crappy first audition. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. Still and, and I and and luckily, uh, I don't know if it was a mistake or Susan Shopmaker or Eric or Eric, but not Eric Darbaloff, producer. Somebody, luckily, brought you back to callbacks and. You had changed, and you came at it in a different way. I don't know what was your side of that story, because I had written you off, which would have been horrifying. Because I always do a shitty first audition. This is like the plight of my life, where I'm an insecure person, and when I first go into an audition, I'm always scared shitless. It wasn't shitty. It just wasn't like it wasn't. It wasn't what it, it's not right. what it was. Yeah, exactly. There's something else happening. But then when I got the call back, then that to me is like, oh, they liked something about me, and then uh, suddenly it all drops away, and I'm able to really drop into what it is that I really want to do. It, yeah, what did you what did you hear between your first audition and second? Like what happened? Do you remember? Like what? Who called you and said what? I, I think vulnerability. But I mean, it yeah. was, I think I think the note was vulnerability, and it was sort of like find more vulnerability if you can. And when I was able to root into that, then I think I found Gabriel because he's a very vulnerable man. He is because your second audition was so good. It's like oh my yeah. god, that's yeah, that's the guy. And so it was vulnerability. And once I keyed into that, which. I'm naturally vulnerable. We all are, right? Yeah. And especially if I'm nervous during auditions, I'll just be nervous then. Right, right. You know? So I got cast based on just like being able to root into what I was. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems that role was written just for you. It does. It does. And it, 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 it's, it's probably the most important movie I've made in my life because um, of what it... I, I, you know, what it did for things. I mean, we're, we're here, and I know we're a small group tonight and everything like that, but I still hear about this movie all the time. It's yeah. still, I still get letters from odd places around the world of young men or men thanking me for having saved their lives, literally saved their lives, because they saw some 10th generation VHS copy of this in fucking Siberia yeah. and realized that, oh my God, I'm not sick. I can actually be gay and have a normal life and be a normal person and it doesn't have to be dark. It was like well, that happened over and over. You know, that's been happening. Me too. Ever I, mean, since. I used to get I used to get tons of videos and, and and I was analyzing this with a friend of mine and, and and with with Phil today. I think I was saying you know I, it wasn't completely conscious, but I remember wanting to make a movie back in nineteen ninety five because that's when I first found the script where I was already tired of coming out stories and. Yeah. AIDS dramas and gay people dying at the end, and it's like I wasn't living that life. I was living a life where everyone just existed in a world where you didn't talk about being gay all the time. You just were, and, and your your problems were just human. And so Jason's script came along. And I was like, oh my god, that script doesn't have any issues. And I knew I had to be responsible about AIDS, so I put in the one moment where the condom is exchanged. Done. Everyone's doing having safe sex. JP's got a condom. 
Lori Bagley asked for a condom, so anyone who's going to fuck is going to have a condom in this movie, which is done. You know, so that was done. And, but I didn't really realize that that actually was kind of a big deal for young people, gay people watching a movie where there was a world where people, even their straight roommate isn't homophobic, he's just an asshole, mm -hmm. which is different. So, I know. I, I it helped normalize things. Right. Yeah. Finally, gay people were normal. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks well, to you guys. Except, that's, Steve. except but, for Steve. And that's that's the other interesting thing I've noticed. <laughs> you know, is that a lot of a lot of uh, younger people these days, it, which it was really, we've come so far that millennials don't even understand this world anymore that yeah. we're portraying on this. You world. know, a friend of mine. They don't even understand it. It's like, well, what was the problem? I mean, this just looks like what, the way it's supposed to be. A friend of mine yeah. played the movie for a a younger person. Yeah. I'm assuming twenty something. Yeah. And he asked. Did guys used to take their shirts off in clubs? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> That's interesting. That's okay, interesting. I want to just say one thing. This was released on my birthday, July 23rd, 1999, right? That was planned. That was planned for my birthday? Planned. Wow. <laughs> and it was only made for $450,000. Is that true? Yeah, we finished it for that, yeah. It's a $10 million movie, you know. Well, it looks that way. I wish I, wish I had that money, but... Well, you'll have it. <laughs> um, this one, for many years to come, and your brand new one, right? Yes. Let's see, what else did I want to ask you? Will there be a sequel of this movie one day? <laughs> <laughs> What's so fun? There's a, there's a lot of... I think we'll be 70 by the time it's get 80, if it ever gets made. Well, um, let's put it this way. Yeah, I'd like there to be. So it would be nice if that happened. Mm -hmm. And we've been thinking and hoping and talking, and maybe, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. One quick question, and then we're going to take some questions from the audience. What was it like working with Tori Spelling? <laughs> Who that? Oh, it was wonderful, actually. Um, she was fantastic. Yeah, I... Uh, I think we all came in sort of with the apprehension of what are we getting here, but uh, Tori was so game on. She was funny as hell oh, yeah. as well, just, and um, with like a real indie team player. She was there the entire time. So, you know, I had gone in, I didn't watch all of her shows back then, so I didn't realize, but I knew of what she was, and uh, I, I have to say she was just an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was nice to watch her blossom, too. It's like she really came out of herself. And I agree. I mean, I, I told the story before, but I, I think ignorance was bliss as far as I'm concerned because I had never even seen 90210. I had never even I had never seen her act. So when one of our producers suggested Tori Spelling, I was like, huh, all right, I don't know. She's got to audition. And she auditioned. And she did the diner scene pretty much verbatim as she does in the movie, and it was it would it was like, oh my god, she's funny. She totally gets why this is funny. And she went for it. And it was like she wanted in the room like any actor. She wanted for real. And as far as making the movie, you know, you know, you were sleeping on a couch in somebody's apartment while we were making she got a a big hotel room with her manager. But it didn't that that was nothing to do with it. I mean it didn't matter. She showed up, she was the most professional did her job, was amazing, never a moment's worry, as all of you were. And, you know, I was, being a first-time director, I thought, oh, God, is it going to be, I don't know, she's going to be, I don't know. And she was totally amazing. Was this the day she day shot... Motion picture? Uh, I want to add something. Her idols were Judy Holliday and Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. She really wanted to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, she hasn't been offered comedy roles, but but she really loved comedy, and she was down to earth and earthy, and I just she was so great. And I want to talk about a day where we were having lots of replacements for hair and makeup. It got really bad. We kept replacing hair and makeup, and one day. We were going kind of crazy, and someone else needed attention. And Tori just said, I'll take care of my own. Wow. You know. This was her first major film role, right? No. 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 She's done House of Yes. yes. House, of House of Yes, yes. which gave her a taste of comedy. And that's what 
and she wanted to do more. When, oh yeah, go ahead, sweetie. By the way, one quick thing. This was filmed entirely here in New York, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I just wanted to say something about, about Tori. Um, in the diner scene, um, that was shot overnight, and um, my and Eric's close-up was the last thing shot, and she was wrapped before then, and um, she was told that she could leave, and then they were going to shoot our close-up, and she said, oh, well, but who's going to do the part if they're doing for their close-up? And they're like, oh, you know, somebody else will read it, it's fine. She's like, oh, no, I'll stay. You know, they need to, they need to do, they need to do it with me so that they can have the reaction. Like, and it was like 9 o'clock in the morning. We'd been there for like know, the 13 sun hours. The sun was coming out. We were all exhausted. The fries were cold on the table. <laughs> it was and a diner, by the way. It was uh, the Mark, Market, Market Cafe, Cafe nine, on 9th Avenue. Nine, 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 seven, I passed seven, by it every, every time I passed by. Oh, yeah. was it going? <laughs> Do we have any? She was, and the other thing, she was, the day that she did the tap dance of a scene. We were in a school down on the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. No air conditioning. Hot as hell. It uh, was so hot. And we were mopping sweat. And she would just got up there and did it over and over. And not because she flubbed it, but because they had various things and angles they wanted to take. And was fresh and great. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh my God. Everybody sort of just stepped up. You know, I mean, it was like, wow, she's really on the money with this. And she was very, very approachable. And I also have to say, this man here was so wonderful when we shot this movie. It was my first movie. And he was just you were so virgin. relaxed. Huh? You were virgin. No, I was eight before I was seven. No, she was, um, he was, he was so kind to everybody. I just he got was, it. And yeah, it takes a while to throw my thing on. And um, he was so kind to me, and so kind to everybody, and so so easy to work with, and um, and I always am very grateful that I got to to act with. Does him. anyone want to say anything else? Robin, how was it working with Tori, tap like teaching her tap? Well, it was not something that she'd ever really done before. Right. She'd never tap danced, and um, no. she she applied herself as as well as she could, given that it was you know really outside of her skill set. But I wasn't worried at all when she showed up and did the, and she knocked it out of the park when it was time to go, you know, when it was time to shoot, uh, at least from here up. <laughs> Tori wasn't a diva, huh? No. No. No, no. no not at all. Not for a With the name spelled? Not for a Helen well. Hampt was the diva. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Hampt. Helen Hampt was the best. Nobody was. No, nobody, nobody was. We didn't have any problems. Let's take some questions from the audience. Anyone Who has a question for right, these yeah, great, incredible people? Phil, you in the back. Phil. Me? My question? Yeah. <laughs> My question. You have to have a question. Come on. Oh, what was the shooting time? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, literally, for, from start to end, how long was the, the shoot? I forget. I think it was like 20 days. 20 days. It was 20, 20 or 21 days. 20, right? Wow. Yeah. Which seems long at this point, because I've made a movie for 15, but 20, 20 days. It was 20. Yeah. How long was it? It was 20 days. Oh, okay. so and, you, I, and did you actually really find that script in 1995? Yeah, because we were doing Blood Orgy in 1994. It might have been 94. Yeah. So was I was trying to get the movie made from 94. We shot it summer of 98. It came out in 99. So it's how many now? What is this? What year is it? It's 20 20 years. 21 years now of this movie. Nobody has any other questions? Go ahead. You all still keep in touch now, all these years later, like you and JP and all them. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm living here in New York, and right. JP and, and Jim are all living out, uh, you know, west. But okay. uh, I still like them, even though they're <laughs> so still okay. I mean, we don't call each other when we're depressed, but we stay in touch. Coco Peru, get in the Peru. The quick version is. We were doing a reading, and I didn't have an actress. An actress canceled who was supposed to do the, 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 the female part that ended up being Tori's part. And I just thought, who's the funniest woman I know? Coco Peru. So I said, just come in and just read the role, because I need to hear somebody funny read it, right? And it was just, he was so funny that it's like, okay, we got a Quentin, yeah, Quentin Loop, yeah. It's like, I got to put him in the movie. So then it evolved, and the scene in the bathroom evolved, and then you know, the, the, the monologue, you know, got kind of sketched out and then Coco kind of wrote the monologue and it became this fabulous Classic. funny scene. That's yeah. all the questions? Oh, yes. I was going to say, that's all the questions? No, you have one. Well, I have, the, I have one comment. I'm not from Siberia, but I remember the movie came out, I was in high school in Israel, 
and it was really, really rare for like a gay LGBT film to have a theatrical release wow. in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is now like a gay mecca, mm -hmm. but actually in the 90s it wasn't that big. Uh, so for me, just seeing it like a gay optimistic film, mm -hmm. uh, actually a gay film on cinema at all, was wow. such a big thing. Was it dubbed or was it subtitled? No, no, no. We don't do dubbing. Oh, thank God. It was, only, it was subtitled, uh, and I think it was received well also afterwards in VHS. Uh, not VHS, it was already, like, I guess, uh, DVD afterwards. But, uh, yeah, I thought it had, I think it had, it had the moderate success, like, in the Tel Aviv circle. Like, wow. it was talked about. Why is it called Tree? Oh, because we, we couldn't find a title, and then I think it was one day, I think Jason's boyfriend at the time was Michael Rucker, and I think Michael... I think someone said tricks, and then he said trick, and then trick. That's perfect. That's the title. That was the title. It came out of a. It, we how were struggling. How old was it? Fifteen years. It was shot in summer '98, so I can't do the math. What? Sixteen years. Yeah, it still holds up, doesn't it? Great movie. And we're gonna see it in one second. <laughs> but before we go and see the featured attraction here, let's talk about Magic Mike. That's our feature for next week. And we have, hope you all come. Uh, we have an underwear fashion show as part of the show that we're screening. Where was that tonight? Yeah, well, that's later. Thanks. So don't miss it. And we have a trivia contest coming up at the end of this movie with great prizes. So don't miss it. Thanks for coming by, all of you guys. And thank this fantastic actors and two of fantastic, incredible, legendary people who made this fantastic movie possible. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Barry. Right. Let's see Trick. Yay! Yay! You have a boyfriend? Would I be here if I had a boyfriend? I've got one. You want to come over? I'm Mark. I'm Gabriel. Do you live around here? Why are you here? Hi, I'm Catherine Lambert. I'm an actress. This is a bad idea. You were roommates? No. But we're very close. I even take care of his dog. Trixie! You've got your place to yourself now, right? I need to be alone. Bruce Mark. You trap. I live with this guy, Rich. He's straight. I need the apartment. I need the apartment. You can't ask a one-night stand to come back tomorrow night! Flip? Yeah, flip. Where do you live? This summer. I miss Coco Peru. Hello. A whipping pool. What the hell is a whipping pool? Fine Line Features presents Christian Campbell, J.P. Pitock, and Tori Spelling. You want some? Yeah. In a comedy that shows. I find the idea of two men getting on incredibly hot. How the other half loves. I don't want to sleep with women. I'm sorry, Gwen. No matter which half, you are. There is a drag queen in the bathroom? A little pee shy? Oh, don't worry. Miss Coco's here to help. Gabe, I talked to my mother. She called you my boyfriend again. We went to one prom back when I thought I was. Thought you like girls, then. Whoops. Trick. A story about two guys trying to make it in the big city. It's big. It's beautiful. And you're gonna love it. Whoa, Here we go. Oh, my nose, nice my lighting. Are we on? Yes. Steve, do you have a mic? I don't Steve Hayes? No, come on, come on. You don't need one. Thank you very much, baby. Oh, Pico. I haven't seen you in ages. You Mr. Seen Sinclair. Sinclair. You haven't seen who in ages? Bobby Pico playing piano. For Bobby, you. where are you? Right oh, there. my God, I know Bobby, Bobby from The Monster. Mr. Lester Sinclair. Oh, Lester Sinclair. Oh, Lester Sinclair. <laughs> wow. That's Lester Sinclair. Oh, my God. There's Bobby Pico. Oh, wow, the legend. The legendary. My God. My oh, no, it's starting. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Don't start yet. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, no, stop it. Hey, we're going to do our Q&A here. Hello, guys. Stop that movie, please. They stopped it. They stopped it. Okay. We don't want to miss one, one, uh, one second of this. Second of this. One inch of this movie. What? There's 90 of them. There's 90 inches, okay. Anyway, welcome to Midnight uh, Classic Cinema. 
here at the Cinema Village. I'm Barry Z from the Barry Z Show. So thank you guys for coming. And do we have a show tonight? Oh, yeah. What a show, huh? <laughs> My special guest tonight, uh, Jim Fall, the director of Trick, which is the movie we're going to screen tonight. <laughs> we have Christian Campbell, the star of Trick. Wow. wow. And Steve Hayes, another star from this incredible movie, and Trick, right? Yes. Could you do it again? Yes. Yes. Okay. And Jason Schaefer, the writer. And Jason Schaefer, okay, the Jason Schaefer, the writer. Wow. Cinema royalty, that's who we have here. Hollywood royalty. Hollywood royalty. <laughs> a bunch of queens. Huh? A bunch of queens. Except for And one king, right? As I said, yes, you're an honorary. All right, so let's discuss the movie and how you guys got involved. Okay. Who should we start with? Jerry? Jason? It came I mean, Jason. It came out of his brain, so he should start. Okay. Jason, tell us about the movie. Ah. Uh, uh, oh, you have to leave. What do I say? I don't know. Well, I, well, what is it about, and why did you write it? I had moved to New York. I graduated from college and moved to New York. and Where? I'm From UCLA. Uh, and uh, I thought I was writing a musical, actually. And I was about halfway through it. And uh, I showed it to my boyfriend at the time, and he was like, I, I don't think this is a meant for the stage. And I turned it into a movie. And literally... Uh, the day that it came out of my uh, computer, my printer that's not unlike the printer that you're going to see in the film, um, uh, I decided to have a reading in my apartment. I called uh, a friend of mine from UCLA, and he read the role of Gabriel. You'll actually see him, Eric, Eric yeah, you'll see him as the stage manager for Tori Spelling's show in the movie. Um, uh -huh. He did the first reading in my apartment, which was written, which was the day I was first finished. He said, can I take this script? I think I know somebody who might be interested in this. And he gave it to Jim, I think on the yeah. way home. Well, that, if, if I mean, that's, that's sort of where I enter. Is, yeah. you, I knew Eric because Eric was in a play that I directed and co-wrote. Which and was? Blood Orgy of the Carnival Queens. <laughs> it was in Manhattan, right? It was in Manhattan, yeah. And I, had, I guess it must have been on the eve of your reading, I had just sort of said, Does anyone, has anyone read a script that they like and know, and I can't, you know, I want, I'm, trying, I'm looking for a movie to direct, and, and that was either right after your reading or right before, but then he either knew about me then or after, I don't know, right. and then gave me the script, and it was called, it was called Gay Boy, it was called Gay Boy yeah. which is in the movie at one point, Tori says Gay Boy, which is, always makes me giggle. But it really was that title that made me laugh, I thought, oh, God, I have to read, so I have to read this thing called Gay Boy. And, uh, and the rest is history. Then we spent four years together just uh, developing it and trying to get the damn thing made and trying to raise money. And wow. yeah. The rest is history, right? Yeah. You want to tell us briefly what it's about before we see it? It's an all Asian cast. It's set, <laughs> it's set on a ship. Um, it's about two boys wandering around New York City trying to find a place to get it on. But in the meantime, they get to know each other, and there might be more than just naughty things in their minds at the end of the movie. And where did the title Trick come from? Your ex-boyfriend. Yes. We were, we were Different ex-boyfriend, actually. You um, mean he was an ex-trick? He's been through many, I guess. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we had been, we, we had been, Jim and I had had a conversation for, we were calling it Terrible Titles. Um, tell me Kiss My titles. Face. Oh, Kiss My Face. That tell was them, terrible. Them. That was, what, what, that was what, a Bob Hawk. Uh, it was, can you remember Kiss My Face Lotion? That was the lotion. Yes. He was, yes. I think it was in somebody's Kiss bathroom. Kiss My Face. And we yes. just had that as a working title. It was title. terrible. Awful. It was terrible. And, uh, but we, we were brainstorming for years, yeah. probably. And then, um, like and we said, talked Trixie. Tricks. Tricks. We Tricks. talked to every variation, and he goes, what about trick? Like, and we were like, oh, oh, yeah. Right. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And what was the name of the dog in this? Trixie. Oh, it was always Trixie. Well, then it became Trixie, wasn't it? It was always Trixie. Oh, it was always Trixie? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And this was made in 1995? No, no. <laughs> Not that old. 1998. 1998. <laughs> and it was released on my birthday, July 23rd, 1999. As I said, that was planned. It was. It was. Planned. <laughs> <laughs> And it only cost four hundred fifty thousand dollars, huh? Well, adjusted for today's, that would have been about seven hundred and fifty. But yeah, yeah, right? Wouldn't it be about seven hundred fifty? Yeah, yeah. And let me introduce the cast. The star, Christian Campbell, the gay icon, is here. <laughs> Tell us about this role. Uh, and why you took it? Uh, I took the role because it was a role that.
that paid. Um, <laughs> How much? Uh, I was gay for pay in this one, I was about to say. So, uh, he was gay for pay. I, I don't actually remember what it was, but it was not anything that was substantial. Um, let's just say that, because we knew we were making an independent movie. Um, but it was shot in New York, and I'd never shot anything in New York. And so uh, I was living in Los Angeles at the time, and I always say that I'd lived in Los Angeles for five years, and I want four of them back. So I wasn't, <laughs> right. I wasn't really a happy person there. So when I went out to New York, I, I went and shot this, and uh, we didn't really think we were doing anything special. I didn't think. I thought it was just yeah, but the first time you tried out for this, you didn't get the role. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't get the role. Um, you didn't get the role, what happened? Right, here, here's the story. I, I really suck in my first audition. You didn't so suck. I am <laughs> always suck in my first audition. No, you didn't suck. You, did, you, just, you just weren't vulnerable enough. You kind of yeah. came in and you didn't have the right tone, and, and I sort of, a little too quickly, I think, dismissed you in my brain, and luckily Susan Shotmaker or whoever, or Eric or someone, brought you back to... Yeah and said something to you and actually gave you some direction, which I obviously hadn't given you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. said, come in and be more vulnerable. And you came in and you, you, you knocked it out of the park. You're amazing. I, I, I still have your edition, I think, on tape. Really? Yeah. Give me oh, why? Wow. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Yeah. That, that, I, need to go, I need to get that and take that to my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really good at it. Really oh, good. Wow. Oh, interesting. Wow. But this yeah. role was written especially for Christian, wasn't it? No. Well, no. Well, almost. No, no. No, no, no. No, he fits it wonderfully. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is well, no, in yeah. retrospect. Yeah. yeah, it was written far, far before me. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a nice surprise. Uh, I don't think we knew that we were making something that was going to have the effect that it had uh, at that time on, well, I, I hate to say it sound big, but it did make an effect on society. Um, and uh, so... How did it? Uh, it ticked the progress meter a little forward in terms of it showed finally uh, the ability of living a life being gay and not being ashamed about it, it not being about having HIV or about just gratuitous sex or about being on the outskirts of society. It was about just being normal. Uh, yeah. yeah! You know, and finally, and right? Finally, right. That's one of the reasons why when I read Jason's original script, you know, I personally was at that point in 1994 is when I first read it. I was already sick of gay movies. That <clears throat> issue movies are coming out, movies are AIDS dramas, and you know, if an AIDS drama, somebody dies at the end, and I don't know, it, 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 I just wanted to make a movie that was about people just being, and then lo and behold, the script you know, fell on my lap, and it was like, oh, there's no issues other than human issues in this story, and that's exactly kind of, so that actually was kind of revolutionary in a very subtle way, that it wasn't, and that's why I think a lot of young gay people responded to the movie, because it was, you know, a world they wanted to live in. Like, wow, I can live, just be myself. And even Rich, the, the straight roommate, he's not a homophobe, he's just an asshole. So ah, like, yeah. Which is different. <laughs> yeah. 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 So how did you hook up? You met through a Craigslist ad? Or what? <laughs> no, no, no. We met through our friend Eric. Through a mutual friend. Yeah, yeah a mutual friend who, who had read the script. And, and he's in the movie, isn't he? Yeah, yeah the, at the end, in the diner. Yeah. Eric Bernard? Bernard. 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 Okay. So we told you, uh, I mean, you told us about your role. And why did you want to take it? You didn't tell us that before Steve tells us about his role. Why did I what? Why did you want to take this? The money. Uh, well, the money. Uh, it was uh, because I was afraid of it. I was scared of it. I was scared of the role. Um, why? You were, uh, you were I remember, I, I was saying this in a loving way. It was so funny. The kid, you know, the kiss in the movie yeah. was your first kiss. With yeah. We yeah. never rehearsed the actual kiss. No. So we see you kissing him for the first time. Yeah, it was the first time I ever kissed a man in my life. I know. And it's on screen. You, you never kissed a man before. Never. Never. This is the first kiss of a wow. man. He's yeah. straight. Yeah. He's straight. Yeah. He's straight. And so, uh, and, yeah. And so it was, uh, it was... But I remember it was so funny because uh, that day we shot it, I remember right before we shot it, and you kind of go, okay, I'm going to kiss a man. I'm going to kiss a man. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of said it out loud. It, was, it made me laugh. I'm like, oh, that's so funny. And then we, I said, oh, action. And then it was just this lovely thing. Wow. Yeah. Now, when we cast Steve, unfortunately, Steve was not our first choice for that role. Who was? was? That was a joke. No, 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 no I wasn't. No. I only got the role because I wasn't cast as Trixie. Well, <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll do that. Wait a minute. Were you gay for pay also? Oh, yeah, really. I'm always gay for pay. I pay them. I mean, that's what they do. <laughs> Jason, Jason wrote this script. Well, okay. Jason did not write the role for, for someone of your age. Right. It was supposed to be, it was originally a, uh, a peer of, of, 
Christian and JP's. Yes, JP's, yes uh, it was. And then. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing Death Valley Days and they found me, you know. You'll be great in this. You'll be great. No, you know, well, you had seen my act a lot and I yeah, did like was, 10 readings of this. Yeah, you and did the first three. I did the first three. And then there was virtually like, every. And then I did every one. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, then the what was yours. Well, you said they. You said to me, you know, the the producers think that this is a pretty big. They they should get a star for this part because you've got a flashy part. So I can't guarantee you're going to be cast. So I went in. Did I, I say that. Yes, I you did. Don't and I went in and I auditioned. And when I got done, you turned the producers and you said, "Ladies and gentlemen, that's comedy." And I remember that. And then I went off because they were doing my musical that I wrote, uh, "Kiss Me Quick Before the Lava Reaches the Village," which is my favorite title. And they were <laughs> they were doing that in Seattle. And you called me up and you said, Stephen. Nobody can see anybody in, in this part but you. And I was just floored. But I have to say, I have to say something. I was fortunate also because Bobby Pico helped me amazingly. I hadn't sung on, uh, in a long time and on screen. And he was just, you were my backbone uh, for that. Well, we had a ball. No, we had a ball, you know. And I was so nervous because you said to me I had to sing it a cappella. I had two chances to, I, I just had to sing it. You said, you're... They're not going to, the audience in the, in the thing is not going to hear the piano. You're going to hear it in your ear and you're going to sing it. I said, a cappella. I said, wasn't that Anastasia's sister? You know, a cappella. But then I had to do that. And then when I went to Sundance, and Sundance was a, was a real adventure for me because I'd never done anything like that. And I got to hang with Christian's mom, Marnie. Is, is she here? Yes, she is. Wow. She is lovely, my, my buddy. And we ran all over Park City together. We had that, a ball. That looks like his sister. Yeah, yeah, she does. She does. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, our first, our first actual screening of the movie was at Sundance. We had never even, other oh than in God. the editing room for like people, less people than like five, six people at a time. A new line like, cinema bought it, no? Yeah. We were the theory. first one bought, were we? Line. Yeah, we were. Fine yeah, line. fine line yeah. feature. Yeah. When, when I got there, it had already been out a week, and all of the trades in Park City said, trick sold, first movie sold. Yeah. And I remember because I went up to the box office to get something, and somebody said, oh my God, you're a trick, you're great. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is great. And my boyfriend at the time had bought me a bright yellow ski parka with a no. black cap that said oh, trick in the same yellow. I looked like a bumblebee. I walked all over Park City in you know, like an advertisement. You know, we had a great, and then we had the opening at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood. That was, oh, that wow. was spectacular. Remember how great Did you put your feet on the cement? Either yeah. one of you? No, no, that's Grauman's heading. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't get my feet out of the cement. <laughs> Wait a minute, I have one quick question. Um, for both of you. No, I'm single, he's married. I see, no, no. Was there a casting couch? Yes. There it was. was. Yeah, as often as I could make it, but nobody slept on it. Was there? No, no, there was not. <laughs> no, in fact, in fact, when Christian and when anybody auditioned, you can't ask them if they're gay, but you have to ask them. Now, I think I asked, are you willing to kiss a man? I mean, yeah. I, 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 at some point, I'm sure I asked, yeah, you know, I don't want to get to that scene and have anybody, not have just you, JP, have yeah. anybody freak out. And mm -hmm. actually, I was more concerned about Lori Bagley, who plays... Um, <clears throat> Judy, who has to bare her breasts in the movie, and that was actually more concerning to me because that was nudity, and that was more. There's, that's the only quote unquote nudity in the movie, and and she's so beautiful and she's so funny. And I was, I remember asking Susan Schottmaker over again, "Are you sure she's really gonna like? Is she she's gonna take her top off and be funny at the same time?" Really, that gave really? you an R rating, right? Well, I think, I think. Come in the eye. That line probably did. <laughs> oh, was it? I remember at the, at the opening in New York, I sat next to Lori, and I said, "Because she's from Texas, she's a big Texas girl." Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. And I said, "You're from Texas?" She said, "Yeah, I am." And I said, "Are, are your parents excited about this?" And she said, "No, I had just done a movie with Burt Reynolds," and my mom said, "Jay, Laura, I can't believe you're going to do a movie with Burt Reynolds." And she, and she did this dead on Texas accent. <laughs> So I thought, wow, she's really, really good. I never expected that. Uh, um, she was great. Yeah. Christian Campbell, what was it like kissing another man on film? Uh, uh, you know what? Obviously, it actually didn't matter. Uh, but but uh, after I had announced that and we just went on and did it, then obviously I realized, oh, wow, there's, what the fuck was I worried about? Um, and But more did important... You have, did you have to make, you know, in your mind a physical... <laughs> You know, being of a woman to be able to do this to a man? Not at all. No. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I think I, I, the only thing I, we should probably close and watch the movie now. But yeah. I, um, <laughs> uh, you know, the one thing I want to say is that the movie was made in 1998, and at that time, for two 
actors to go and play openly gay, uh, you know, be, be openly gay in a movie. Two straight but, actors. Two straight, well, actually, no, that's what I'm trying to get to the point, is that I think that there was a difficulty in finding the casting for Jim because there were a lot of gay actors who didn't want to play this role back then because they didn't want to be outed. And we're at a different place now where I don't even know if I would have gotten cast in it, would get cast in this movie if we were done today. Because it didn't take two straight actors to play two gay men. I mean, it does, you don't need that anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't, people don't need to hide from that anymore. So we've come a long way. I think that's one big thing, like yeah. looking at the, the, through the prism of time, is that we've really come a long way now where an actor can be out and play interesting roles, whereas back in the day when this was made, no, it took a bunch of straight actors who were the only ones to do it, you know? So, that's here for that. Yeah. I also had asked, like, why didn't I cast, mm -hmm. you know, two gay actors? And it's because there weren't, there weren't any really yeah, out exactly. actors, yeah. right, that yeah. were willing to do it, that were David right Trey. for the part. Uh, they, 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 <laughs> right, but they weren't right for the roles. <laughs> and it's also, it's, a, it's not the most ethnically diverse movie. It's, 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 it's rather white, but... Um, You'll notice any time there's any featured extra, I try to put someone of color in the frame because the movie was very, very white. Anyway, there you go. So wait a minute, before we leave, yes. tell the audience, were you gay for pay? Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> Always. I see. What was that song, uh, you doing it, about a pinga? Comment it goes to me, pinga. Yeah. In just pantalones. Do you want me to go around, mister? Right, and the music was incredible, too. Who did? Uh, well, David Friedman did the score. Jason wrote the song Enter You, which is like an earworm. It yeah. sticks in your head forever. <laughs> so, how far do you know? Well, as far as we're concerned, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for this incredible cast? And director, yes. Was Coco's role written for Coco? Well, ultimately, yeah. I mean, we, what, not originally there was no Coco in the in the show, but when we did a reading of it, we didn't. At one part, we didn't have a funny woman to read the Catherine role, and I brought Coco in just to read Catherine because I knew he'd be funny. We'd hear somebody funny do that role, and then it was like, oh my God, we got to put this person in the in the movie. And then over four years, we did I don't know seven or eight readings. The script evolved, and the scene in the bathroom evolved, and then that became the scene that. So it was yes, it was written for him ultimately because it came out of an organic process of just doing the readings of the play, of the screenplay. So. Anybody else have any questions for this incredible cast and director and writer? I want to. Go ahead, Bobby. I, no. You. Yeah, Bobby's next to, next to Bobby. <laughs> Why and how Tori Spelly? Uh, it was just, it was really just one of the producers I'm forgetting who, I think it was Anthony Bregman, said, you know, Tori Spelling is uh, free on her hiatus from 90210. Maybe she'd be great for Catherine. And, I don't know about you, but I had never seen 90210, and I had no preconceived notions about her. So I was like, all right, as long as she's willing to audition. She didn't get handed the role. Her, her parents, her father had nothing to do with the financing of the movie. And I, and in fact, my casting, my casting director hated the idea. In fact, she was threatened to quit if I put her in the movie, <laughs> and which really pissed me off, actually, because I flew out to L.A., and Tori auditioned with the diner scene and did it almost verbatim the way she does it in the movie, and was amazing, won the part like any other actor, and I remember calling uh, my casting person, I said, oh my God, she's great, and she like didn't want to hear it, so I was like, you know what, whatever. Wow. Good for you. So she won, she won the parts fair and square. Yeah. Okay, any other questions before we go to the movie? No one? I have, I have a comment. It's not a question, but while the most of you were up there, and for what it's worth, like Christian, you said about how Trick wasn't some giant, you know, culturally changing movie, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Philadelphia or anything like that. But it, it certainly affected people individually. Um, people who were, you know, younger when the film came out and mm -hmm. didn't have a concept of, you know, of romance in gay movies. Mm -hmm. And I think, for what it's worth, to you guys, you know, people our age who watched it, who were, you know, slightly younger when it came out, it was a real like. It was a really big affecting piece for us because it really gave us something to, you know, hope for. So, for what it's worth, it might not have had the large impact, but it certainly had individual impact for many of us. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Wait a minute, one thing. You can also see another one of his movies, Lizzie McGuire, right? Right, but that's another night. <laughs> and Christian, where can we see you? In Reef of Madness, no? Uh, actually, well, Reef of Madness movie we did back in 2005, which we are looking to produce it here in New York, actually, in, uh, uh, in a couple of years. Steve, so where can we look see out for that. And where can we see the fabulous Steve Hayes? Title Queen at the uh, Steve Hayes, title Queen at the Movies on YouTube. And you can see this and the Barry Z Show 
forever running on the Manhattan Cable on YouTube and Ustream. And next week we have Magic Mike with an underwear fashion show. So we hope you all come by to see that. And what else can I tell you? Uh, we have a trivia contest after the movie where you can win free movie tickets. So stay tuned. <laughs>
I live with this guy, Rich. He's straight. I need the apartment. I need the apartment. You can't ask a one night stand to come back tomorrow night. Flip? Yeah, flip. Where do you live? This summer. I miss Coco Peru. Hello. A whipping pool. What the hell is a whipping pool? Fine Line Features presents Christian Campbell, J.P. Pitock, and Tori Spelling. You want some? Yeah. In a comedy that shows. I find the idea of two men getting on incredibly hot. How the other half loves. I don't want to sleep with women. I'm sorry, Gwen. No matter which half you are. There is a drag queen in the bathroom? A little piece shy of delivery. Miss Coco's here to help. Gabe, I talked to my mother. She called you my boyfriend again. We went to one prom back when I thought I was. Body like girls, man. Whoops. Trick. A story about two guys trying to make it in the big city. It's big. It's beautiful. And you're gonna love it. Would I be here if I had a boyfriend? I've got one. You wanna come over? I'm Mark. I'm Gabriel. Do you live around here? Why are you here? Hi, I'm Catherine Lambert. I'm an actress. This is a bad idea. You two are roommates? No. But we're very close. I even take care of his dog. Trixie! got your place to yourself now, right? I need to be alone with Mark. You trap. I live with this guy, Rich. He's straight. I need the apartment. I need the apartment. You can't ask a one-night stand to come back tomorrow night. Flip? Yeah, flip. Where do you live? This summer. I miss Coco Peru. Hello. A whipping pool. What the hell is a whipping pool? Fine Line Features presents Christian Campbell, J.P. Pitock, and Tori Spelling. You want some? Yeah. In a comedy that shows. I find the idea of two men getting on incredibly hot. How the other half loves. I don't want to sleep with women. I'm sorry, Gwen. No matter which half you are. There is a drag queen in the bathroom? A little piece shy of delivery. Miss Coco's here to help. Gabe, I talked to my mother. She called you my boyfriend again. We went to one prom back when I thought I was. Body like girls, man. Whoops. Trick. A story about two guys trying to make it in the big city. It's big. It's beautiful. And you're gonna love it. Whoa. Yeah.